It isn't polite to take martinis away from the needy. Your need isn't as great as mine. Well, at least we have something in common. A need. A need for another drink. Yeah, let's. Double martini, please. Me too. Say, do you like the bars better on Lexington, Madison, or Third? Well, I'm a Third Avenue man myself. How about you? I'm impartial. I tell you what, we could start out on Lex and then go uptown and then downtown and then end up at a little bar I know on third. You know, this is going to be the start of a beautiful friendship. Come on, let's go. <laughs> take you home, dear. You think I'm a fool. You think I don't know. No, Karen. Poor Jeff. Come on. Let's take you home. right now. I, I, I must have been pretty bad. Jeff never would have brought me here. Which hospital is this? This isn't exactly a hospital. It's the city jail. Why am I here? You killed a man last night. Jeff Simmons. His throat was cut with a brandy glass. It's not a very likely story, is it, Mr. Williams? Likely or not, it's true. Do you really expect us to believe such an obvious lie? I expect you to be polite. Considering the amount of damage you've done to my property already, it's the least you can do. We were only doing our duty. Really? Well, the only justification you could have for doing it is finding what you're looking for. Mr. Williams, I want... Lieutenant. Sergeant, we found the body, sir. Really? How extraordinary. Where was it? Well, it was in the barn, sir. All right, Constable, you can go now. Oh, I see. It was a little trick. I'm disappointed in you, Inspector. I expected something less childish from you. Of course, they never found Helen's body. And as much as they might suspect she had been murdered, they had no proof. In spite of their thorough search, no body was found. And that, along with the fact that there was no obvious motive on my part, resulted in a cloud of suspicion 
gradually dispersing. By Christmas, even Sergeant Theron became convinced of my innocence. And to show there were no hard feelings, I sent him a brace of cockerels as a Christmas present. Well, that's all there is to tell. Sergeant Theron enjoyed the cockerels very much indeed. And I was pleased about that. I'd raised those particular chickens on a very special new diet I'd taken great pains with. The ingredients were varied, and I processed them all myself, using my new hammer mill to grind everything very fine. Sergeant Theron asked me to list the ingredients I used so he could make a mixture for his own chickens. I was glad to. I listed them all. All but one, that is. I left out that one special ingredient that made it really. So you see, I had to kill him. He was trying to spoil the only beautiful thing that was left in my life. Is it spoiled now? There's no way to go on from here. No way. No way? No, don't leave me, Ryabutinska. I promise you everything will be different. You are forever promising. You never listened to me when I tried to make you see how wrong you were. Yes, but I'll listen now. From now on, if you'll only not leave me. I must. When you killed him, I realized that we could not go on. Because while I've lived with your lies, I cannot live with something that kills. How can I live? No. Rhea Buczynska! Rhea Buczynska! She's gone. I can't find her. She's run away. I can't live without her. Help me to find her. Please. Help me to find her. Please. Please. We'd better go. Steve, I'm so glad to hear your voice. Uh, you all right? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine. Well, you sound funny. No, no, I'm all right now. I don't know what's been the matter with me. I'm scared out of my wits imagining things. You talk about being neurotic. No, honey, you're not neurotic. You just haven't been feeling well, that's all. I guess I didn't help things much this afternoon. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right, honey. It's this heat. It's enough to drive anybody crazy. Forgive me? Of course I do. Oh, is Ed still there? Ed? Did you send him? Well, sure, honey, to, to keep you company. Keep me company, huh? Well, I finally got rid of him. I, I wished you hadn't have. Look, honey, will you be careful? And, and promise me you won't let anybody in the apartment till I get home, all right? All right, don't worry, I won't. Anyway, it's all right now. The locksmith's here to put the chain on. Ellen. Wait a minute, Steve. Ellen. Hello, Ellen. Come on in, will you? I want to put right there. All right, ma'am. Excuse me a minute. I'm talking to my husband on the phone. Ellen. Ellen. Hello, Steve. Honey, who'd you just let in the apartment? The locksmith to put the chain on the door. He finally got here. A locksmith? Ellen, didn't you hear the radio broadcast? Well, what are you, what are you talking about? It was just on the radio. The police are looking for a locksmith. Honey, they think he's the one that killed those women. Ellen! Ellen! Ellen, are you there? Oh, Steve! <laughs> 